Good. All right. <clears throat> What's going on, everyone? Another past the 40, and my guest today is Jen Connors. Jen, how are we doing today? Real good. How are you? I am great. Now that we spoke, and I know not to call you Jenny, so this is the last time you will hear that. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> doing well. <laughs> where, where are you uh, joining us from today? I live in Piatone, Illinois. Piatone, Illinois. How far is that from Chicago? Because that's obviously, I guess, <laughs> the place that people know in uh, in Illinois. Just about an hour, just under an hour south of Chicago. A suburb? Yes. Piatone. Okay. Small, small town. Good to know. Are you home in office? Where are you at right now? I'm in my living room, so my animals um, stay calm. Oh, we're going we're gonna to get to the animals in a minute, actually. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm very curious about animal life in, in, in that household. How are you feeling about your 40 questions today? I'm good. I'm excited. I mean, I know ha some of them, so I'm interested what the other ones are going to be. <laughs> And we, won't, we won't try to uh, surprise you too much here. All right. Are you ready to rock? I'm ready. So let's start off with those animals. Two dogs, two cats, five lizards. Give me the names of all of them. All right. So I have Hogan, who is my lab, who is um, 12, because I'm obsessed with Hulk Hogan. I was hoping that's where that, that was the reason for that one. Okay. Yeah. Caner, because Blackhawks. So we've got Caner. Um, my cat. One of them is Cena, because I love John, John Cena. Cena. Mm -hmm. The other one's Mittens. I don't like it that much. We got it at Christmas. The kids did that one. I kind of was pushed out of that one. You got um, you to give the kids a, <laughs> you gotta give them some love once in a while. I have uh, three. We have three bearded dragons. Um, one is Phoenix, because I love the heat. Um, one is Stella, because... I like to drink Stella, and one is Blanche because I'm obsessed with the Golden Girls. So, um, and the other one is Spark. We have a crested gecko named Spark because of my business with Avocare. Mm -hmm. So we named him Spark. And then Larry, we just call him Badass Larry because he's a leopard gecko. He's the oldest. He's real slinky. Um, I used to have some betta fish too, but mittens kind of killed them. <laughs> Um, and I'm, 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 I'm sure there's going to be more coming in my house because I just, I love it. Yeah. It sounds great. I, I love the names and we're, we're on the same page with, with wrestling, with the like Stella and your shirt has Tupac on it. So we're, we're off to an, we're off to an incredible start here right off the bat. All right. I noticed that you commented on one of my um, Instagram photos, go blue. Do you have any ties to U of M? Um, my friend, I went to school at Ty Streets. I graduated with him in eighth grade mm -hmm. and he told me one day that he was going to play for Michigan and I thought he was crazy. And then I was watching TV and like 18, 19 and all of a sudden Ty Streets came on there for Michigan and I'm like, holy crap. So, um, yeah, and then I just kind of evolved into a big, you know, blue world and everyone thinks I went to Michigan and I'm like. No, but um, yeah, that, they're my favorite. All right, great story. Ty Streets was absolutely there. <laughs> and he played you know, professional ball from there. He did. And then coaches out, actually. He did coach a route by me. He went into coaching after he hurt his ankle after Detroit or San Francisco, whatever one he was on. Mm -hmm. Both of them, actually. But um, So, yeah, yep. Very cool. When, when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? I... Uh... A dolphin trainer, actually. Dolphin trainer. Or an athletic trainer. Something to do with water and sports. Okay. And yeah. didn't didn't work out with the dolphins? No, it didn't <laughs> work out with the dolphins because I'd have to go to school. Right. And I didn't go to school. So that's why I also didn't become an athletic trainer because that required school. <laughs> More school. Maybe uh, maybe a dolphin is the next pet in the uh, in the Jen Connors household. Funny you say that with um, winning the lotto, I would love to adopt <laughs> and for real. I always said I wanted to buy a dolphin. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. In, in your in your five um, five facts, you mentioned um, stress and, and depression. And in our email co email correspondence prior to recording, you said that you felt kind of brand new when when turning forty. So. You know, what, what was the, the breakthrough to like make this change? And like, was there an event or was it just a, a, a combination of things? My 30s were horrible, I think. Um, I don't think I grew up or started to really see things until probably the last two years. Uh, I kind of think we're in a blur. Um, and someone just kept telling me, 40s is the second half of your life. Now, 
I don't know. I mean, I don't plan on dying at 80. I don't know what my life is going to be, but something about a fresh decade, 40, I, I don't, I don't know. Nothing happened, but I was so excited to get out of my thirties. Like I was sprinting to mm -hmm. get out of it. Nice. Yeah. Seems like you uh, turned it around nicely thus far. I did. I think I did so far. Awesome. And you mentioned that you're now your own boss. What, what, what is the business that you're in? I am a health and wellness coach with Avacare. I have been in network marketing for about off and on dabbled for 10 years. Um, and I really, sports, you know, has always been part of my life. I played softball through college and I just really like to be active. But then it turned into, um, I worked out for mental clarity, I guess it turned into. And then it kind of paid forward. People were asking me what I'm doing and you should do this. And you should sell. They just, they see me and they're like, oh, you should do this because you'll talk to anybody. And I don't, you know, I said, I get it, but I need to do something I like. I'm not selling Tupperware or anything. Mm -hmm. um, and then it turned into just mentorship. I, I really am a big advocate for supplements and, you know, mindset reset and get it together. It's, it all starts there. I mean, you can do anything you want, but you have to be right in your mind. And I wasn't for a very long time. So it's kind of my way of paying it forward um, at times where I needed to have someone. That's great. And you just kind of like taught yourself the, the wellness, the supplement world and just... Yeah, I don't know what to call myself. People ask me what I do. I'm like, you know, I just, someone told me I just help them from losing it. Like someone just says, thank you for me not sna Like, I don't know when people say, what do you do? I'm like, I couldn't even tell you. I don't know. I don't even know. I just make people feel a little bit better so they're not like yelling at their kids or something. Listen, I'm, I'm feeling better than I was 10 minutes ago. So very, <laughs> I'm, I'm a, test, a living testimonial right now. What, what, is a, what is a skill that you want to acquire in the next 40 years? I like to learn how to write. Um, I really want to write a book. Okay. I'm not good with putting things on paper because I tend to write how I speak and it's fast and it could, you know, short. And I, I would really like to dive in. I would like to read, a, I would like to write a book. A novel, like fiction, make it up. Nope, my life. No, nonfiction. So a memoir or, or something in the wellness space or something yeah, about or you. Yeah, make up a character about myself and make it her life. And then there you go. You know, who knows? Yeah. But that's what I would like to do. I would like to learn how to write. Very cool. Why do you want to get out of Illinois ASAP? I don't like winter. Okay, so you want warm, warm want weather. Oh, no, again. How long have you been in, in Illinois? 40 long years. <laughs> I was planted wrong. So you've had time to really build up this hatred towards the cold and you're just dealing with it. Yeah, I'm not the mom that plays in the snow. I don't build snowmen. I don't shovel. I'm the, I don't even own boots or winter coat. I'm completely oblivious. I don't like it. Everyone said I'd miss it. No, I would not. Well, wh when you finally get out of there, where, where are you headed? Obviously to warm weather. Somewhere south, I imagine. I would like some water around me. Um, and it, I mean, I really don't want to see fall temperatures. I really just want summer. So hot. <laughs> Vegas. Arizona. Phoenix, right. Phoenix, Phoenix, yes, yes. So let's say you had to go on a road trip from Illinois to Phoenix and you had to bring three people. Who is going to be in the car with you and it can't be family members or family pets? Oh, I'd take the pets over people to be quite <laughs> honest. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'd probably bring my best friend Vicky. Um, my good friend Kristen. And a friend, my friend Stephanie, I think. Yep, that'd be it. Girls trip. Yeah. Are they all? Are they all friends with with each other? Like a lot of good chemistry in that car. No, only none of my friends have ever really mixed together. I've always been a floater. So, and when you bring them together, it just never seemed to work out too well. Um, but two of them have met and they get along. But I think you should be with strangers. I think that's that's good. Yeah. Sure, just contained in a, in a moving vehicle for hours with people yeah, you don't know. Yeah, I recently stayed in downtown with four women I don't even know in Chicago. How did that come about? Fantastic. I think everyone should do that. <laughs> <laughs> some We're kind of doing it right now. 
Right. Be with some strangers. Yeah. Do you have a go-to karaoke song? No. <laughs> no. I'm not much of a singer. Not a karaoke no. person? All right. Then instead of that question, since you're wearing a Tupac shirt, what's your favorite Tupac song? Oh, goodness. Well, I like the whole All Eyes on Me album. I can't pick one. I, 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 it's every one means something. Like it was such a time in my life, but I think I don't know. I just like the whole all the albums. It's like choosing between your kids. It's a tough one. <laughs> what three words would your best friend use to describe you? Ooh, um, loud, bold. And they call me the party favor because I just always bring something where I go. Like, we just have a good time, I guess. Definitely like, fun and bold, yeah. You bring actual something tangible to hand out or you just bring an energy that turns the just place into me. a party? That's what I'm told. It's just you. You are the party favor. Whatever that means. I, I've, I've, <laughs> I don't know what that means, but they would say that I'm funny. I definitely bring the entertainment and I'm just bold. All right. Yeah. If you could have any music group alive today, and we're going to assume that Tupac is dead for, the, uh, <laughs> for this question, to play at your next birthday party, which group would you hire? Or which artist? Ooh, anyone, huh? Yeah. DB Next. All right. There you go. What, what's the worst job you've ever had? Ugh, I bust tables for a wedding reception. I was probably 18 years old, 17 actually, earlier than that. Yeah. Working at a banquet hall and it was bad. Yeah. I don't like food, service, can't do any of that. <laughs> Telling what to do. Cleaning like, up, cleaning up after people. Cleaning up people's mess, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> what is a pet peeve of yours? <sighs> pet peeve of mine. I guess it might go to one of my, hmm, I don't, nothing really kind like people have like can't chew with their mouth, like nothing really annoys me that much. I pretty have a high tolerance. I just, I don't really think anything really truly annoys me. I just kind of ignore them. I don't really, nothing, it just, if it doesn't involve me, I just kind of blow it off. That's a great, great attitude. <laughs> I, I noticed that, um. You're doing intermittent fasting, is that right? Yes, I just started. So what what does a what does a typical day of food look like for you? Well, today is a low carb day. Okay. So it'll probably I have I have not broken my fast. I was about yet. to say, have you eaten yet today? No, I have not. Okay. But I probably have a shake and a salad, um, and then tonight I'm on the go, so it'll probably be leftovers because I have track. So it depends on the day, like low carb days, you know, no carbs, but a regular day. This is hard for me because I like to live off chips and things like that. Who but doesn't? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but that's, but, that's the day. It's a simple day. So what time, like what time do you start eating and what time do you stop eating? Well, it's a 16 hour fast with an eight hour, so eight eating. hours of food window. And within those eight hours, you have all three meals or, you, or it's just kind of eat randomly or... I all three meals. I do, do have meals. Um, dinner is usually lighter. I'm not a big dinner person anyway. I never have been. I love lunch. Like that's my favorite meal of the day. Um, but I'm prepping for a 24 hour fast starting tomorrow night. So we'll I can tell you, and I don't want to go too deep into this, but I actually last month did a, um, a five day mimicking fast and I'm doing it again next week. Um, it's essentially like this company I'll, I'll talk about this with you off, <laughs> offline, but um, I'm in the fasting game as well, and I think it's super beneficial. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't tried the intermittent fasting yet, um, but I'm very curious about that. When your kids uh, turn 40, how, how do you want them to finish the sentence, the most valuable thing my mom taught me was blank? Do not ask for anyone's validation. Or acceptance, Just or explaining yourself. Do your do your do your own thing and uh, be happy with it. Yes, 
Yeah, don't have to explain it. The answer, if the answer is no, the answer is no with the period. If this is what you're going to do, you don't have to ask permission. What is something that you're uh, curious about these days? Mm, the other side. I'm learning, um, you know, I was born and raised Catholic. You know, my background, you know, I scream Catholic. I tell people I'm Mexican, Polish, and Irish. So I scream Catholicism. And kids are going to CCD, and I've been in my personal development and things over the years of really trying to center myself and what, what exactly is that and re, really revisiting faith and a higher power. So those are things that I'm currently focusing on as my kids are now in CCD and they're asking me, why do I have to do CCD? And what is, what I, is CCD? It's, it's going to school church school like mm -hmm. make your sacraments and you know as i think it's important for them to make their sacraments they have some sort of structure i'm beginning to understand that it's not about it's a relationship with um a higher power not so much a schedule like you have to be there type of thing so mm -hmm. i just want to make sure i steer them in the right direction because i was brought up you know catholic school so um I just don't want to make them think like it's a free for all. I, you know, they're only 13 and 11. They need some structure. Um, but I'm very interested to dig more into that. Very cool. If you could give a, a TED talk on any subject, what would it be? Mm. I think how to get out of a quicksand life. Quick. How, how would you define a quicksand life? being dumped on constantly and having to dig yourself out. Um, I think I lived that for a very long time and how to just break out of it and just to kind of slow down a little bit because everyone says it's Groundhog Day. You know, everything happens to me. It's the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. But you're still the constant, so it's your fault. Sure. So. You know, I think teaching that quicksand that you can, you can get out, you just can't, you know, bring in so much that drowns you. I, that's it's a big. I think that's a, it's a big thing that I teach in my mentorship with um, the women that come to me. Is that the terminology you, you use, quicksand life? Yeah, and I and I never really thought about it so much for quicksand until. <laughs> I watched the movie The Replacements with Keanu Reeves, and they're in the locker room. And he's talking like quicksand, you know, you bad, bad play, and then that just happens. And on top, he's like, you're like, you're in quicksand. I'm like, yeah, that kind of explains my life. And it was like, <laughs> and now I kind of have kind of taken that from that movie. Can always count on uh, Keanu Reeves to, uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> to drop funny. knowledge. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It, it was just, that's where I got it from. Fill in the blank. I, I'm not as blank as I used to be. Uh, selfish. What, what, what was the change of that? Is that part of the whole, the whole change or is this from a long time ago? I think I'm a healthy selfish now. I think everyone should be selfish. Um, I was a very, um, gimme, gimme, gimme. It's not my fault selfish. So I, I think I've redefined selfish. You, you're now, cause you're focus, focused on your, your wellness. Yeah. Like selfish I think in that sense. I think we should all come first. Yeah, absolutely. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given or, or one that, that stands out? Mm. Well, I wasn't one to have really a lot of good, you know, that growing up with that good advice. My advice has come later in life. And I actually have two. Um, I struggled with having that, you know, that party girl status and liking to go out and drink and everything. And I, I, I felt I had a problem for a, a long time. And someone had told me when the heart changes, the wine changes and had to dig deep as to why I feel the way I feel. And, um, it really stuck with me because now I could enjoy, I can go out again and I don't have anger, rage, um, I can stop 
you know, it's not about always getting to that part that we've all gotten to. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think um, I recently was gone and to be a leader, you always have to be a student and you have to constantly learn to be a better leader. And um, that was really good because I have to balance that with my business. You know, I have a team, I have, I'm their leader, but I have to always be continuing to be a student to be a better value to people. So that's why I'm doing this program with intermittent fasting. That's why I'm doing something out of my comfort zone like this, you know, just, you got to just learn different things and, and then you can be better at leading others. Absolutely. Two good pieces of advice. Who is your celebrity crush? <laughs> I had a hard time with this one, but <laughs> I'm, I'm going with my Brad Pitt. Yes. Old Faithful. Can't, yeah. can't go wrong with that one. No, I, I had a hard, tough time with that one. <laughs> who, yeah. who, who, else, who else was in the, uh, in the conversation? Well, I love Vince Vaughn. Okay. I love Luke Bryan. The uh, American Idol judge, Luke Bryan? No, the country singer, <laughs> Luke Bryan. Yeah. Same, same person, <laughs> different personality. Yeah. George Clooney. You know, I could have gone on and on and on, but Brad Pitt, it's always been Brad Pitt. Sure, a classic, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So supplements, I, I, you mentioned that before, and it's something that actually I am curious about because I take some, but like I never, I always have in the back of my head, like, Am I taking, is this right? Should I do this forever? Is this like changing the baseline in my body and like I should go on, on, on some and off some? Like how do I know what the right supplements are for me? It depends on your season. Like I went into a very, I was anemic. So I was getting B12 injections for a long time. So I had to be pumped with a lot of B vitamins, you know, and getting all of my levels back. I, all of that, you know. You know, I start with simple blood work, you know, to see kind of where you are and fill in the gaps there. But I was taking supplements, actually, you know, I take fish oil, I take a probiotic, I was taking a lot more bees, but you know, with diet and exercise, and a lot of those supplements have gone away, I consistently take a probiotic, I consistently take fish oil, um, I collagen, you know, it's kind of like the season of where you're at in your life. Some people are so tired or really have appetite issues or energy issues. So there's supplements that are offered to give you more energy or give you appetite control. You know, I'm kind of even keel now because I, I've, I've changed my diet and my way of doing things with this program that I'm doing. So I don't seem to need as many supplements as I used to anymore. And how do you know whether you need them or not, really? Like, I can say, all right, I eat, I eat healthy, I exercise, but, like, does that mean I don't need it? Like, sh like is the goal to not take supplements because you want to do everything naturally? Oh, no, I'm not like that. No. I, I think supplements are needed to in supplementation with, your, with life. I mean, you know, it's a, a supplement can be removing coffee to take, drink what we sell as spark, which is, you know, an amino acid is an herbal and a supplement gives you focused energy. It's just a matter. It could be a trade off probiotics, you know, digestion is very, very important. You know, I don't have any dairy. I don't have yogurt. I don't have things like that. So a probiotic is needed. I think you have to listen to your body and see, I mean, if you're feeling great, then I guess you're doing it right. But if you're not, my dog <laughs> will be up here shortly. Um, is that is that Hogan? <laughs> no, that's Kaner. Hogan doesn't care. Kaner does. Yeah, yeah. Hogan doesn't care. Um, so I guess you have to listen to your body and see what you're really looking for. It's different. If you could have a, a drink with a fictional character, who would it be? <laughs> this was another one I laughed at too. But I'm gonna go with Princess Jasmine from Aladdin. Why? I felt that we, she was just dying to know the world and dying to get out. And she had that family that kept her in these four walls and she just kept clawing through. And my dad was very strict and I just wanted to like bust through and, you know, and I busted and then I got in trouble and busted again. And, and then when she got out, she got that bad boy life and she just went I don't want to say she went crazy 
but you know, I just, she wanted to experience life and she just wanted that. And I relate so much to princess Jasmine and <laughs> that's great. So you, you feel like you guys have our kindred spirits and have a lot in common. That was my first dog. I had a girl dog. Her name was princess Jasmine. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, is there someone in your past that you feel you um, still owe an apology to? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Any one or reason you care to mention? Probably my dad. Yeah. For busting through all those walls. <laughs> yeah, I, you know I haven't spoken to my dad in some time, and um, I think. Uh, I, under, I understand where he was coming from now, I think, with a lot of things over the last, you know, five years. Um, but, yeah, I think he, 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 not just an apology, he deserves a, he deserves, deserves a pat on the back because, you know, whether he'll ever see it or not, I, I turned out all right. And, you know, and he, he, was, he, he did all right. He did great, you know, so it'd probably be my dad. All right. If, uh, if I talk to your best friend, how would he or she fill in the following sentence? I love Jen. She's the best, but I wish she were a little less blank. Mouthy. <laughs> Mouthy meaning talk I, too much or uh, vulgar? I know what's best for everybody. <laughs> That's my problem. I, I, I can... Um... I actually had to say sorry to one of my very good friends because I didn't know what was truly going on and I just want to fix it, you know, and I want to, and so I just feel I'm telling everybody what they need to do for their life. <laughs> and if someone did that to me, I would be <clears throat> like, well, way opposite. Right. So I think that's what it is, but they, that I need to just not have so much energy and, and, uh, I get very emotional when it comes to anyone that is being hurt in my world. What are you most excited about right now? Mm, summer. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'm pretty simple. I mean, I like where business is going. I feel that I feel better health wise. Um, you know, I'm just really just enjoying life with my kids. I feel I'm much more present in their life now. I really, I love this as much. I love this age of 13 and 11. Um, my son's a 13 year old. And um, I'm just really excited to follow them around. You know, I just pretty simple. What is a piece of advice you would give to your 20 year old self? Hmm. I'm not going to say listen to my parents, listen to your parents, but I am going to say, don't put yourself in a comfort zone because of judgment. I think, you know, back to my kids, I'm teaching them, you know, validation and you don't have to ask for things or have to explain yourself, you know, if you can't do something you know, just live your life. You don't have to go to college right off the bat. You don't have to do all those things that they're telling you what you have to do. Just, um, and have fun, you know, I mean, screw up, but you know, have, have fun, but don't, don't worry about so much what other people are going to think of you. Cause I think I wasted a lot of my life doing that. Caring what other people, oh, for other people sure. thought or whatever. Yeah. Mm hmm. What is something that you've tried that you'll never try again? Cigarettes. Good one. You yeah. try you tried them or you uh, No, I or they were part of your life. I remember it significantly. I was at a bar and I was like 21 and I saw everybody smoking and I never smoked, you know? I mean, and my aunt smoked and my dad smoked for a long time. My grandpa and it was just gross to me, you know, but I always but I would like when I was little, they used to say I used to take a little hit, like when they had the smoke, my aunt used to tell me. I thought it was so disgusting. And I tried it once and I was, so, it was disgusting. I'm like, I will never do that again. And you didn't? I never touched a cigarette again. Great. <laughs> no, it's gross. Yeah, it's disgusting. But that's you smoke? The, no, I don't. 
<laughs> I think I think it's disgusting too, but and you can it, lecture from that, but it's no no lecture. There you go, being being mouthy again. There I am, very mouthy. <laughs> Sorry, can't stop. If, if you if you won the lottery tomorrow, what are three things you know you would do with the money besides buy a um, pet dolphin? My dolphin. Okay, I would um, pay off family debt. Um, make sure my kids are set for life, and go to Ireland. Why Ireland? My grandpa, he was a big, huge part of my life, and uh, Irish, and just the atmosphere. Is he there, or he, that's where he's from, and you just want to see that, or he's actually he lives there now? No, he's passed. My okay. grandpa has passed away, um, but just he always wanted to go there and talk about things, and I just wanted, you know, I want to go to Ireland. You want to see it? Yeah. If you could have personally witnessed an event in history, what would you have want to seen? Want to have seen? The Titanic. Not from on board, I imagine. No. <laughs> I love that whole I don't know. I, I just would love to have seen the, the the that lifestyle that just always to put together and just that properness. I would have liked to have seen that. Yeah. So you'd be hanging on the uh, the top of the boat, not in the uh, right. downstairs where the. Harder. I got off the <laughs> boat, but you know I wouldn't have tried to play hero. But <laughs> right. um, I don't know. There's a lot of different things. I was thinking about that. I'm like, I don't know. I just like water. Like the, the whole history of the Titanic is very it's appealing to me. Cool. When was the last time you watched that movie? Hmm. Spent some time. It's coming out with some new one now. Jack's Frozen or something coming back. I really? saw some. I know. I hope it's fake. <laughs> Jack, yeah. It's just it's just DiCaprio in a in a block of ice for two hours. Yeah. Austin Powers, Titanic, <laughs> or something. It's like it was weird. I hope this trailer is not right. Right. That sounds funny. What what's something you're um, you're afraid of? This world for my kids right now. In what in it's, what context? I feel old when I say things weren't like this when I was their age, but it's very, it's very true. I think everyone's, there's too much entitlement. And I think that, you know, everyone's got to have an opinion. It's either they got to have an opinion or, you know, they, it's, or it's about Jesus, you know, or it's, it's about something. And I just, I get worried because kids are doing things a lot faster. And there's just some things that, that scare me with how people act and besides the shootings and, you know, you can't live your life in fear, you know, and I have a very open dialogue with the kids when things, like I don't shelter them from anything, you know, and, and, and it's, it's scary. You know, it's hard to have your kids come home and say they had like these level X, Y, Z lockdowns at their school for a drill when you're just worried about tornado drills and fire drills when we were in school and right. we never had locks on anything. So it's just very, it's very scary. I, I, that's, that's my biggest worry. I don't even, I hope it changes. I know it all changes with you and in your own four walls. You can only control that. But to think of people now having kids when it's just supposed to be such a joyous time, it scares me. Very fair. Un un unfortunately, that answer is very uh, reasonable. Uh, now that you have experience as a parent, what, what is something that your parents did really well? when you look back on it? Manners. They taught you manners. Chore. Yes. Uh, manners and chores and yeah, I think we don't have, and spankings they gave us, you know, we get that's, I'm not that I spank my kids or anything, but I think uh, discipline and I'm the parent, you know, it's like I'm the parent or, you know, respecting your teachers and respecting your coaches. I mean, the thing I couldn't imagine, I could not imagine if, oh my gosh, my dad would have gone crazy. Like you don't do that. What the way that, the way that some kids talk to the, their, their oh, superiors these yeah. days. Oh my goodness. Or even their parents. I mean, <laughs> Oh, my, I would have, whew, I mean, I have, oh my goodness, it would not have been good. But I think that's what they did. You know, the value of that. And I probably should have listened a little more when they talked about money. I'm not good with it. <laughs> <laughs> At all. What is a quirk of yours that, that few people know about? <laughs> 
my blinds and shades have to be even. <laughs> like, like in walking, every window in the house has to be the same. Everything's got to be even. And and if if I'm walking somewhere and I or driving and I see someone's blinds they're not even, it drives me. <laughs> you insane. you pull over, knock on the door. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, why is I mean, not even every. It's yeah, yeah. I, I see behind you though. You have you have the vertical ones. So I hate them. Are they all open like that? Like the exact they're, same right amount? Now they're all open, and then at night they have to be closed at a certain time because people are all they're looking in. Like I ha I close it all down. But they all have to be the same, no matter at, at, any, at any given time. They're all equal. So yes. every every window in your house looks like what I see behind you right now. Yes, or the blinds are done, and people who live in this house think it's fun to like switch it up. So they they know it's a thing that that they, you, that drives they know you crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you had to repeat any single year of your life to date and without changing a thing, which year would you choose? What year would I choose? Yep. I'd have to say, <laughs> oof, gosh, what year? I think it'd have to, I, I'd have to go back. I thought it'd be more, I think 1997 was a very big uh, year. I was um, left home and, uh, it was a year of a lot at 19. I was 19, 19 at the time, right. 20. And uh, the conversations I lived with my grandpa then when all that went down and he, the talks with him, I would, I would take that. Any year that he was in, I would take that all back. Very cool. Have you ever had your heart broken? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who hasn't? <laughs> Was there one that sticks out a child a childhood love? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I was the heartbreaker. I don't know. There you go. Maybe. Yeah, I think uh Yeah, my heart's been broken. Who do you think is someone that would be a, a good guest on this podcast? Ooh. Like a friend of mine? It can be a friend, it can be a celebrity, it can be anyone anyone that you think around the age of 40 that you think would do a good job here. Ooh. Are these your referral points to get people on here, huh? Yeah, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so whoever, whoever, you, whoever you say, I, I expect to be recording with them within two weeks. I would say my sister-in-law, Denise. Your sister-in-law, Denise, how come? She has had a very fun life. And she's the most, she's the most wonderful person in the world. She, she sees so much good in everybody. And, uh, I think she'd be great. She's a, she would have, she'd have you laugh at. She's, she's funny. I would say Denise. We like funny. We like wonderful people. Let's get yes. her. Let, let's get Denise on the horn. She follows you, I think. Oh yeah. I think so. I told her to. All right. Good stuff. Hi Denise, wherever you are. <laughs> Well, let's talk soon. She's what, totally gonna... <laughs> what, what is a, a great compliment that you have received in your life? Mm. Ah, greatest compliment. That I'm a, a, a good mom. I, I, I got a hug from uh, my father-in-law probably five years ago or something and I was saying goodbye and he said you're a great mom Jennifer and I think it's the hardest job in the world and I, I asked myself why I was given two humans to raise you know and and how am I a role model for them you know and and how am I going to tell them I see things that are happening? And they'll ask me, did you do this? What would happen at, if I did, if you did something like this? And I'm like, oh, my goodness gracious. And um, 
luckily I got a little bit, a lot of my mom in me. And, um, I think just knowing that they, people, your children are a reflection of you. So, and the reflection of your home. And there was a time that I wasn't a very good mom. And through the midst of all of that, to hear things like that and people compliment my kids, that's the biggest compliment that I can receive. For sure. Not, not much better than that. What, what is something that all 40-year-olds listening now should go and do or, or try? ASAP, a, a call to action for 40-year-olds. Call to action. Room with strangers. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm part of an amazing group. Um, and we just went to Chicago. There was 135 strangers that went to Chicago, all because of one amazing woman's vision. And I roomed and they reached to me. One of the women reached to me and said, I would like to room with you in Chicago. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> but putting four complete strangers in a suite for three days. Three days. What, what was the event that you were all there for? Um, I'm part of a tribe of called Robbie's Gathering Place, um, founded by Robbie Page. Robbie Page is my business mentor with AdvoCare. She's um, a platinum leader with AdvoCare. And she had a vision of bringing women together um, to empower each other and to stop this nonsense and the me movement and all of these things. And she's rolled this vision out and she had her first drop the pin of where we were meeting. And she's in Texas and Chicago is her favorite city. Mm -hmm. So we came here and um, not everyone went. It was a cut others, but there were still 135 of us. And I, I met a handful of them through AdvoCare. So I knew them, you know, through that, but maybe 10 of them I knew. Um, and everyone else was a complete stranger. And through that experience, it, it's, it's, it was wonderful to just be in a room and it just all flowed. And there was no, there was, no, I've never been around three days and there was no crying. No, I mean, no bad tears, no arguing, no, it was just the most, um, refreshing reset that anyone should do. And I think you should just be with strangers and get out there and take a chance because it works. Yeah. Great advice. I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. If you could work for any person in the world, who would it be and what job would you want? Bethany Frankel. All right. Good one. What, what, what would you want to do for, for Bethany? You know, I, I love, I, you know, I really like the way she flips, how, how she partnered and she does renovations and, you know, with big, I, I like the investment property part of it, how she does stuff. But I love how she branded her stuff with Skinny Girl, mm -hmm. despite every um, obstacle she's gone through. I followed her. She has quite a story. I don't know if I want to be like a partner or an ambassador or just, or even just take her lip, man. I love Bethany. Like she is like, I think what she's doing for like animals now, and what she did for Puerto Rico, like all of her, she has a be strong foundation that she's gives so much back. And mm -hmm. I love how it affects her daughter does not put her on camera, doesn't exploit her. She says how it is and you either like her or you don't. Um, I have the utmost respect for her. So I would love to meet Bethany Frankel. Yes. All right. Good one. If you were hosting this podcast, what is a question you would want to ask other 40-year-olds? Mm. Mm. <laughs> other 40-year-olds, huh? Why is 40 so wonderful? Well, I like to hear what other people think. Does everyone think it's wonderful? I guess that's what I'll find out. <laughs> I you know obviously the people that that come on here to talk most most I would say do think it's pretty pretty wonderful but there's also this like conception out there it's like oh 40 oh that sucks now 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 I'm old no right? perception not conception um oh. yeah I'm I'm I mean, I'm with you I think it's great and I'm I'm embracing it and that's why we're doing this whole thing here yeah it's awesome so We've actually quickly reached the last the last question already. We we flew we flew through that. Oh, look at right? that. Time flies when you're uh, having fun with strangers. Yeah. What song did you choose to uh, play us out of here today, and why? Well, my girl Stevie Nicks, Fleetwood Mac, 
go your own way because that's the only way you can go. In the end, it's really just you. That's right. She'll play that at your uh, at your next birthday party. Yeah, she'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So a little Stevie Nicks to play us out of here after we say goodbye to Jen. How'd that go? Feel good? Yeah, I feel great. Easy. It was good. It was, right? Nice. Yeah. Uh, very, very straightforward. Very simple. You killed it. Where, where can people find you if they want to uh, connect or hear anything about what you're up to? On Instagram, I'm Jen Connors and also on Facebook. So. And Connors is C-O-N-E-R-S, just to uh, clarify. Yes, yes. Connors can go a couple different ways, right? Yes. Apparently, it's a super complicated name. <laughs> super complicated. <laughs> it's, it, seems so, it seems so simple. I mean, if people question me when I spell it. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. Well, that, that's, I mean, I asked you before we started how to, yeah. how to pronounce it because I, I would think Connors is spelled, I, my, my, first, my first thought would be C-O-N-N-O-R-S, I think. Like Jimmy, Jimmy Connors, a tennis player. Oh. I would probably go that route. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, everyone, you heard it, C-O-N-E-R-S. So look Jen up and say hello because she likes strangers. I love them. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. I appreciate your time here today. For asking me. My pleasure. This was fun. Let's yeah. uh, get Denise on the phone and. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's call her up. And we'll She's stay in touch. Got to Thank get her on Thursday. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for uh, joining us for another episode of Past the Forty, and we will see you next time. Thanks, Jen. Bye.